Okay, so welcome to the last lesson of the year, section 12.2. Um, we're going to be making regression models and making prediction with those regression models. So number one, the table below shows the temperatures in December in College Station, Texas. We need to figure out what model best fits this data, find the equation, and make some predictions. So we're going to take this table and we're going to type it into the calculator and find the best model, either linear, quadratic, or exponential. Before we type this into the calculator, you can't type your time as is, like 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Like, that's not going to work. So we have to change the time to, I guess, I don't know, it's called military time. So 10 a.m. is fine, 12 p.m. is fine. Instead of 2 p.m., we're going to type in 14, 1,400 hours. Instead of 4 p.m., that's 16. It's going to be 18, 20, 22. And then that's how, we're gonna, that's how we need to type in our data for this to work. If not, you're going to get it wrong in the quiz. So type it like this. And then the temperature will be our Y values. So let's get our Desmos online calculator, since all of you are online. Desmos. The quiz will be on the lockdown browser, so you cannot access anything except for the Desmos.com website. We will need a graphing calculator. We need to type in the table. And now we need to be type in X. X would be the time in military military hours. 10 a.m. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Now we need to type in the temperature. 39, 35. One. I hope I'm recording the right screen. 54, 49, 45, 42. And now in order to see your scatter plot here, we have to change the window or zoom zoom out because those um, these numbers are big. Let's press the minus sign. And minus sign one more time. Scroll over. Okay, you can drag it and move the screen if you need to. Just find a good window where you can see the dots. So here are the dots. Okay, they clearly look quadratic. Like it's not a linear pattern. It's not exponential. This looks like a quadratic uh, model. So for number one, um, what type of model? We're gonna go with quadratic. So now we need to find the model. So we need to find the AX squared plus BX plus C. So you have to practice how to do that on the decimals calculator. Okay, the way you do it is you go to the second box, box two. You type Y1. Delta. And now you type a, oops, a times x1 squared. Plus b e times x1. Plus c. You have to try, uh, you have to practice typing this or you're going to run out of time on the quiz. So let's round to whatever the question, uh, whatever the question is asking you or whatever the quiz asks. We're going to round to the thousands. So here's my A value, negative 0 0.330 X squared plus 10.696 X plus or actually minus 34.857. So that's our model. Let's write it down. Y equals what I just said. Negative 0.330. 
0.330x squared. If you have any questions or if I mess up, someone let me know. Plus 10.696x minus 34.8. So that looks good. And honestly, for your quiz, I did put something like this, but I only put letter C, like make the prediction, and then you can have to fill in the blank. So this is what I put on the quiz, because you need to have all of that before you even answer C. But on the quiz, you're just typing in letter C here. Letter C, predict the time in the evening when the temperature will be 38 degrees. So we need to go back to our calculator. Okay, so on the decimals calculator, you can already see the quadratic equation graphed on your scatter plot there. Now we just need to type in a temperature of 38 degrees and find the intersection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the third box, box three, and I want to type in y equals 38 because 38 is a, it's a temperature. So that means that's a y value. So y equals 38. And then the, the good thing about this decimal is it automatically finds the intersections for you right there. You notice how there are two intersections, but we want the evening intersection because the question says predict the time in the evening, so at night. So we don't want the morning, the 9 a.m. or whatever this is. We want this one, the 22.635 hours. So let me write down the intersection, and then let me show you how to convert this to an actual time because you need to convert it to time on the quiz. So first let me write down x is equal to 22.635 Oh, there it is again. Question, hold on. Let me stop sharing. Okay, so like I said, we picked the afternoon intersection. So I wrote down x equals 22.635. That's not the answer. Um, we need to change that to an actual time because the question says, what is the time? So for starters, 2,200 hours, that's 10 p.m. So we're going to change it to 10 something p.m. Now the 0.635, those are the minutes. So we need to take, um, we need to take that 0.635 and multiply it by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour to figure out the exact um, minute. We're going to round to the minute. So now let's just use your calculator, uh, 0.635 times 60. And then again, if you're using the decimals, you'll have access to the graphing calculator and the scientific calculator. So for each question, there'll be two links. Click on the graphing one for, on the graphing link or the de, uh, scientific calculator link. So what am I doing? I'm multiplying 0.635 times 60. And that's the minute. So we're gonna round to the whole, uh, nearest minute. So that's 38 minutes. So that means that at 10, 38 p.m., the temperature will be 38 degrees. On the quiz, you're just going to fill in the blank. The p.m. will already be there. Do not put any spaces in your numbers. Just put 10 colon 38. And that's how you're going to fill in the answer. Um, and that's how you do number one. You'll see that on the quiz. Practice it. Let's try another one. Number two is the hardest question of all. Of course, it will be on the quiz. So number two says, Mrs. Garcia is making coffee, but it's too hot to drink. The other day, I burned my mouth. It was awful with coffee. And the roof of my mouth had like a big blister for like a whole two weeks. Uh, it was bad. But anyway, um, the table below shows the temperature of the coffee in degrees. 
the time it takes to cool the coffee depends on the difference between the coffee temperature and the room temperature. Assume that the room temperature is set at 70 degrees. So as time goes by, the coffee temperature is decreasing. So first of all, we want to determine what's the best model for this data. So let's graph it on the calculator. Mm, scientific calculator. Let me just reuse this table here. Um, zero. Now the temperature 180, 150, We got to change the window because these Y values are pretty big, 100, at least 180. And then the X values only go to 30. So instead of zooming in and zooming out, I'm just going to go to the little tool here. This. And I'm going to adjust the X and Y axis. So for the X axis, I guess, oops, I need zero minutes to about, let's go with 50. For the Y axis, zero temperature. And then let's say, start like a 200. So by clicking on the little tool thing, you can adjust your own X and Y axis. So I changed it to zero to 50 for the X axis and then zero to, to 200 for the Y axis. And then you can still drag the screen or change it a little bit if you want to. Okay, so these are my dots. They're not gonna be linear just because they don't look straight like a line. It's more like quadratic or exponential. It's actually not going to be quadratic because of the situation. So um, quadratic has an R square of 0.98, but in the quadratic model, it looks like the coffee will start getting hotter again as time goes by, and that's not gonna happen because I'm not heating it up again. I'm just letting it cool to room temperature. So the quadratic model is not gonna be the best one. We're gonna to have to find the exponential model. So let me just find it here on the third box. So exponential. Oh, this is why this is the hardest question. Um, when you get to the exponential model, we can't just do the exponential model because Exponential models have an asymptote of y equals zero. So here, let me try to explain it to you. So on a graph, here's x and y. The dots that we just graphed are up here, like that. I can try to zoom in. And if you notice where the, the question says, assume the room temperature is set at 70 degrees, that means that you're going to have an asymptote at y equals 70. So asymptote y equals 70. Because since the room temperature is set at 70, the coffee is not going to get any, uh, any colder than 70 degrees. So at, um, like at y equals 70 here, y equals 70. That's where the asymptote is. Question, hold on, let me pause the video. Okay, so like I'm trying to explain, the data that we have in the table has an asymptote of y equals 70 because that is the room temperature and the coffee will not get colder than the room, room temperature. If we try to do an exponential regression right now on the calculator, the calculator, either the decimals or your, or your, um, or your graphing calculator, either one of those, they both can only do a times b to the x, 
with an asymptote of zero. That's all they can do. So what we need to, and, and this data doesn't have an asymptote of zero. It has an asymptote at 70. So what we need to do is we need to shift all of those dots down 70 points so that your asymptote is at, uh, at zero. So all I, so what I need to do again is I need to take all of these dots and shift them minus 70. Let me just minus 70. So to all of these dots, I need to subtract 70 so that the asymptote is not going to be at y equals to zero, which is what the calculator can do. So I need to go to all of these y values and shift them down 70. So minus 70, minus 70, minus 70. So let's do that on the calculator. Let's subtract 70 from all of the y values so that they now have an asymptote of y equals zero. So let's try that. Okay, so we don't need the quadratic model, so let's just get rid of that. All right, so right here, we can just do, leave the 180 right there and then just do minus 70. It will automatically bring it down. So 150 minus 70. You see, it's just shifting the, the points down. Okay, so now, now we can do an exponential regression because now all these dots, I've shifted the asymptote from y equals 70 all the way down to y equals zero, which is what the calculator can do. So now, like, now we can do the exponential regression here. y1 tilde a times b, and you have to raise it to the, raise to the x1. Always click the log mode when you're doing the Desmos. Okay. And the R square value is 0.96. That's still pretty good. Remember the quadratic one was like 0.98, but the situation is not quadratic because the temperature is not going to come back up. So um, this is the best model here. So now... Here was, here's where it's even more confusing. Let's write down the equation now. The A value is 98.966. The V value, the B value is 0.969 raised to the X. But here's where, um, here's how we're gonna write it. Our equation wasn't just Y equals A to the BX. It was actually y minus 70 because we subtracted 70 from every y value. So it's y minus 70 equals a to the bx. But let's just replace a to the bx. So, so remember a was 98.966, I think. b was 0.9. And yes, this is on the quiz. It's probably the hardest one, 0.969 raised to the x. So finally, when it says to find the equation, I'm just going to move this minus 70 over here to the right. So y equals 98.966 times 0.969 to the x plus 70. Now this is the correct final answer because this exponential equation has an asymptote at 70, which is what our data had, the original data. So now that's the correct equation. And that's the equation that you're going to use to find the predictions. And again, the predictions are fill in the blank, so make sure you do them correctly. We're not going to use these rounded numbers, 98.966. That's a rounded number. When you make the predictions, do not use the rounded decimal. We're going to have to go to the calculator and use the entire A value. Same thing with the B. Do not use those rounded numbers or you will get these wrong on the quiz and test. So let me show you how to use exact numbers on this decimals. So, oh, well, first of all, let me see what I'm going to do. Letter B. How long will it take for the coffee to cool to 80 degrees? So this one is just telling you Y equals 80. Um, find the time. Okay. 
Now here's even, no, I'm thinking. I think I have to put my dots, my dots back up. But I'm curious to see, like, what if I just type in 10? Will it be the same answer? Hold on. I'm just thinking y equals. I don't think it's. Why didn't I grab it? Can y'all see the intersection? Why is it much on this video? Okay, so now that we have the equation, we wrote it down. Now we need to answer the questions B and C. How long will it take the coffee to cool to 80 degrees? The thing is that on the, on the decimals calculator, that's not the exact equation. On the decimals calculator, um, your decimals calculator has the minus 70 already, like you already took, you subtracted 70 from all the Y values. So if you're trying to figure out Y equals 80, when you put it into your decimals calculator, we need to subtract 70 and only put Y equals 10. Because if not, then Y equals 80 is like way up here and that's not where you need to be because you already shifted everything down 70. So instead of putting Y equals 80 degrees, we're gonna just put Y equals 10 degrees and graph that under the next box. So I guess the third box here, y equals 10. And you should be able to see the intersection here. So after 73.339 minutes, the coffee will be 10 degrees slash 80 degrees really. So that's what I wanna uh, write down right here. So after whatever I just said, 79 point three, three, nine. These are fill in the blank, just fill in the blank. The uh, units will already be there. Make sure you round to whatever I ask you. I think I only ask you to like the, the tenth place. So 79.3 to make it easier. Um, so practice this situation over and over because this is definitely on the quiz. So make sure you practice it with this Desmos or with your graphing calculator. And then we're going to do the same thing um, on letter C. Miss Garcia. Yeah? I think it's supposed to be 73, not 79. Oh, someone's paying attention. Thank you. 73. Appreciate it. 0.339. Thank you. Um, so after 73.339 minutes, the coffee will be at 80 degrees slash 10 degrees, depending on because we shifted them down. So now we can do the next one the same way. Letter C says, what will be the coffee temperature after 22 minutes? So this time we have X equals 22, and we're gonna just type in X equals 22 because we haven't shifted the X values at all. So the great thing about that Desmos is you can just go and put X equals 22. Um, so let's go, let me get rid of this Y equals 10. Let's put X equals 22. And it's gonna graph an x equals 22 on your scatter plot, and you want this intersection right here. And now, after 22 minutes, the coffee is not gonna be 49 degrees because if you look at your table, like after 22 minutes, it should be somewhere between I don't know 120, 115, and that's because again. This 49 degrees has been shifted down 70. So we need to shift it back up 70. So just take the 49.758 and we're going to have to add a 70 to that. So let me take the 49.758 and we're going to add 70. Mm. So 49, 49 plus 70. 119? Yeah, 119. Just use the calculator. 119.758. And again, the units will already be there. You're just filling in the blank. So the copy, the coffee will be about 119.758 or just round to whatever I ask you to fill in the blank correctly. 119.8 degrees. 
And I definitely got to practice how to do this much faster than what we just did. Um, so practice these models. And actually, I think that's it. Example three is the same thing. So let's see if we can do example three much faster than example two. And we can keep it on video here. Um, example three is the exact same thing. And then I think you have one right here on the back for more practice. Definitely practice. Try to make them quicker or you will run out of time. The quiz only has maybe nine questions, but you get almost a whole class period because it just takes a long time to type this into the calculator. So let's try it again. Number three, same situation. This time, Mr. Garcia, Ricky, made some soup and has some leftovers. He places the leftover soup in the refrigerator, which is set at 40 degrees. So again, the soup is going to cool down, but it won't go any colder than 40 degrees because that's what the refrigerator is set at. The table shows the temperature. Okay, so hopefully you've typed in your data in the calculator. Let's go. Let me just type it in the same one here. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the, the subtracting already. So it's going to be, well, 160 minus 40. Because this time um, the asymptote is at Y equals 40 because the food won't get any colder than the refrigerator at 40. So I'm just going to go 160 minus 40. 138 minus 40. 21 minus 40. 29 minus 40. 98 minus 40, 90 minus 40, whoops, and 84 minus 40. Okay, and if you just retype it, everything else should already be there, so that saves us a little bit of time. Make sure your log mode is clicked. So it looks like the correct equation is, um, is the... 115.998 times 0.967 raised to the x but then don't forget you had to do like you had to do the y minus 40 so let me show you again how to write that so the exponential model is the best to write down the best model remember that we did y minus 40 equals what i just said a was 115.998 times B, which was 0.967 raised to the X. And you can leave it like that if you want to, or you can just move the minus 40 over here to the right, and it'll be Y equals. Um, either way, if it's free response, you can just type it in either way. If it's multiple choice, you'll see this minus 40 on the side with the plus 40, which I think it is multiple choice on the test and quiz. So you'll see it over here, plus 40. So that's the equation model, and now we're going to figure out how long will it take the soup to be um, 50 degrees? So again, you want the Y to be 50. So when you put in 50 in here, it needs to be 15 mi 50 minus 40. So we're actually going to just type in like 10 equals um, the equation that we have. So on your calculator, you already have the 115, the ABX. Now we just need to type in y equals 10 and find out when will the soup be at 10 degrees slash 50. So go to the third box and just put y equals 10 again. So it says that after 73.167 minutes, the soup will be at 10 degrees slash 50 degrees. If you add the 40 back on. Well, let's copy that. Mm. 73.167 minutes. So I wrote it down, 73. I'm pretty sure the quiz is one decimal place, so the tenth, so just put 73.2. Make sure you round correctly, 73.2 minutes. So that was letter A. Okay, letter B is the same thing. How long will it be for the soup to be 42 degrees? So again, we're doing 42 minus 40. 
So we're gonna type in y equals two. Just change this to y equals two. Oh, I'm gonna to have to change my window. Either drag, okay. Either drag the window or I don't know, zoom out. Let's try it again, y equals two. I zoomed out way too much, but anyway. <clears throat> so the soup will be at two degrees slash 42 degrees at a hundred after 121.2 minutes. There it is. I rounded it to the tenth place because I think that's what I asked you on the quiz. Follow the directions. Last question. Predict the temperature of the soup after 28 minutes. So this is an x equals 28. We're gonna just leave it exactly like that, x equals 28, and find the temperature, but then adjust it to the right situation. So after 28 minutes, it should be somewhere between 90 and 84 degrees. <clears throat> so let's go with x equals 28. So at x equals 28 minutes, the soup is 45 degrees, but that's because we subtracted 40 already. So you have to add it back on. So about 85 degrees. So I'll write it down. 45.4, but then add 40. So 45.4, but make sure you add, bring it back up to the rest of the data. 85.4. The units will already be there. You just fill in the blank. Ah! You just fill in the blank. Okay, now you just gotta practice these over and over again so that you can uh, be able to do them much faster than this. So practice, there, the second page is just some practice, definitely do it. And then you also have the um, test review in Schoology in today's folder. You'll have the test review with the answer key. Go ahead and do that. Email me, message me if you have any questions, but we're taking the quiz on Tuesday during class.